I believe it is needless to say that graphics are a very important part of the game. There are many games where graphics is the critical point, where everything resolves around graphics, where everything resolves and oscillates around the picture that is being sent and shown to the player. But many of them uh, combine, many of them combine greatly both the gameplay with plot with the graphical interface shown to the player. But when it comes to indie developers, they are often struck against a problem which is foundings and also necessary skill in order to create good graphics. That's why many people tend towards using pixel art. First of all, a disclaimer. Using and doing pixel art doesn't mean you do not require any talent to do good pixel art. It is bollocks. You still need to have uh, at least a bit talent. I mean, talent is obviously just 5%. The 95% is hard work, dedication also, an idea. But the point is, uh, you can easily learn to do just a decent pixel art, and that might be just enough for you to either create a good prototype, a demo version maybe, or just to mess around and play a little. Uh, in today's video I would like to show you how to get into doing pixel art, how it can be done uh, easily and without stress, and how to integrate uh, pixel art into Unity so that it is as seamless and as painless as possible to you, obviously. I'm using Photoshop, but uh, it doesn't matter what you choose, because you can either do it in Photoshop, you can do it in Paint, you can do it in GIMP, uh, in Coral Draw. Uh, I mean, just to name a few programs, uh, I don't really remember many more names. So whatever you have, you can use it. It doesn't really matter. If you have a Photoshop like me, go away, you pesky bee. If you're working uh, with Photoshop like myself, then let me show you how to prepare the canvas. So first you go new. Um, please excuse me for using Photoshop in this ancient Russian dialect, which is Polish. So you call it some, some name. Let's make it 16 by 16. The resolution really is not that important. Uh, remember to keep it red, green, blue, and let's make the background transparent for the time being. As you can see, the uh, the size of the image is less than one kilobyte, which is great because it increases the size of your game so much if you are using pixel game related uh, graphics. So that's, uh, that's the point for pixel art. We go, we zoom in, obviously. Now we have to go, we go into view, we go into show, we go into grid. Okay, so having now applied the, the, the grid itself, we can see that right now it's very easy to draw a pixel art because we can see each and every one of the pixels, right? But here's the thing. First of all, I really recommend you to make a new uh, to make a new layer. We go with Control Shift N. We hit hard Enter because uh, we don't care. And I really like to choose this kind of dark gray color for background. You probably, if you have watched uh, my other videos, you probably know that I'm, I show kind of uh, fondness for this color. So, and why is that? Uh, you should always choose some color that it's not 
uh, that will not be used in the thing you want to draw. If you are not drawing anything square and you want to use transparency. Why? Because every pixel that's covered in this color will be transparent, obviously. Yeah? So if you really want to draw something in white, you will have a problem because right now everything is fine. But if you are not using this background trick, you cannot really tell a difference from the transparent background and white color in uh, I mean in Photoshop, in Adobe Photoshop. So yeah, that's another thing is the biggest fun begins in deciding what you want to draw. Let's decide what we want to draw. For that, for that we go into Google Chrome. We type random random thing. We go into this uh, random thing, random list, and we got slipper so blues fridge and shoes. We spam it a few times. And we got a drawer. Okay, let's go. Let's find a drawer. And this drawer looks fine. This drawer looks nice. Or maybe we'll go with uh, some kind of... No, I said this one and we'll take this one. We will create a new one. We paste it here. Or we can have it on Alt tab. But Really, the point is to have some kind of... You, you can have the idea you want to draw in your mind, but if not, then go and find an inspiration on Google. Go find a, the random thing to draw. <laughs> I don't care, why would you either? Now we go to color palette. Color palette. What colors to choose? If you are... A loser like I was then you go like oh so this is this and this color I will choose this one and draw some stuff with this one then I will choose this one Let go with this one here yeah. do something no that's bad practice never do that we go into Google Chrome once again and we type color palette And we have like a variety of variety of websites where you can go. I like Colorsco. Uh, we go into Explore because I, I don't really have time for those generator bullshit. Or many, many, many other websites like this. You can either go around your house and find uh, some some color inspira inspirations. But the point is using uh, a kind of set. Color palette will make your uh, image stand out and also will give it a unique look because those color palettes are designed by people who earn a living by designing color palettes, which means that somebody is paying them for doing their job, which means that their job is worth being paid that kind of money. And uh, I don't believe designers are being paid just a few bucks okay argument number one hyperlight drifter if you are not blind that you can clearly see that the color palette is very much different from the world we are experiencing around us the dominating color is purple red blue and it is some kind of a different color palette than typical game setting would you would use but it made the, the the game so much different. Let's choose some color palette. You can choose randomly, you can choose whatever you like. I, for example, like this one. Uh, as you can see, there is also a code. There's also a name. If you like really into, I don't know, maybe later naming the, uh, the, the item we are creating. So we want to create a drawer yes so let's clear what we want to do now is we go into our color 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 palette Jesus. we go and copy then the color uh, value we return to Photoshop and we paste 
the color value and right now we can draw with this color but let's put uh, a few pixels with this color here so that it is not um, lost in the process we repeat it I mean I'm not saying uh, so yeah as you can see it is work it is just work but the work is somehow you can find it hard you can find it simple but most uh, that but the most important thing of all is that it is really rewarding first of all we'll go with outline and there are two tactics to follow whether you want the outline of your object to be black or you want no black outline at all I will go for the black outline my belief so when you make a mistake yeah, so one pixel goes goes off the trajectory you intend to follow then simply go for the rubber remember to change the, the mode into pencil and then you simply erase those buttons going back to the so when doing pixel art what's important is the harmony because many times it is not that the art itself is bad but it's uh, it's unorganized so for example here we we've got three drawers three pixels high each Okay, so let's say uh, the drawer is done. Now we go into Save As, and depending on what you want to achieve, for the sake of this tutorial, we'll save it as a Photoshop file, so PSD, because uh, you'll see why actually it's uh, extremely easy and convenient to. It's ex you will, I will show you why it's extremely convenient to, to keep it in the Photoshop file format. Okay, so let's call it drawer for the time. Okay, so create we create a new project. It will be of course a generic 3D project, empty one. Having that having created that, we investigate why uh, the drawer is not in our assets. We just simply drag it drop into this. Okay, so Let's begin with the very basics of setting up the project when we go into our drawer Yes uh, We have to change the texture type into sprite. That's the most obvious thing right now we go into the sprite as an object and we selecting the sprite rather the, the drawer and that's it thank you for all the credits no just kidding so let's scale it up what we can see now is a blurry piece of shit first of all we return to the drawer uh, asset we check the import settings and here first and foremost we change the filter mode to point no filter which means it will be uh, scaled using you know like pixels uh, the nearest neighbor whatever not uh, using kind of anti-aliasing or, or something then as we can see there is still a little bit of a problem with colors 
we go override and we choose format as or 32 bits. 32 bits is better because then we are not using many sprites so it will not cause any performance issues and we know that uh, all the colors are being preserved. And one last more thing my friends, you have probably noticed that I haven't closed Photoshop even though I've opened Unity and I'm still running like several recording apps. It is not because I want to brag on how much RAM and processor power my computer has, although it has a lot, you know, but uh, it's simply because I want to show you one more thing. Look closely. This uh, image is still open and it is not causing any problems with the file being uh, manipulated both in Unity and Photoshop at once. Look closely, now we return to Photoshop, we choose some funky color, we change the color of our drawers, and BAM! That's it. You can dynamically modify your pixel art. I mean generally every kind of art, but since we are talking about pixel art, let's say you can dynamically modify pixel art. So yep, yeah, that's how you prepare and import objects into Unity. That's also how you can find some kind of inspiration and and how to comments working on your pixel art. I hope you like this kind of untypical tutorial on the on the topic. So thank you guys for watching. Remember always wash your hands after doing pee pee.